Hi everyone and welcome to a new update about Erebus. Um, it's our um, STF um, soft um, shadow system and also um, ambient occlusion system based on SDFs. Um, SDF, if you don't know, that's basically um, similar to a voxel but um, it has more um, a better structure. It's it's more smooth and um, gives or represents the shape of the object better. Um, for example, um, if we have um, here this cylinder um, as a voxel, it wouldn't be that smooth. You would see um, all the different. Um, yeah, voxel pieces like in Minecraft. So STF is basically, I think, a better version of voxels. And um, yeah, we, um, for example, we can also generate um, different kind of um, um, STFs. For example, here is from a tree. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, this one also here, um, as you can see, uh, also uses cutout. So um, the the leaves of the tree get um, cut out, and we can also save um, the the color information later. So for example, if we um, later render this tree. Here yeah, we could also save the color information and um, then use this here as a um, reflection or as uh, a light information to get indirect um, global illumination. Yeah. Okay. So um, um, about um, Erebus, this is the first um, project we have so when you load up you get this um, screen welcome screen and some information also here's the online manual and um, this here is our terrain demo and um, uh, one thing you might ask why do I need Erebus why do I what what's what's the use of it so basically of course you could do similar um, results with um, other tools and so, but what's interesting here is with the STF shadows and ambient occlusions, um, they don't cost so much as normal shadows because, as you can see here, we have for this current scene here um, 2 million triangles. What's Unity rendering? And when I um, turn on the Unity shadows here, it's over 21 million triangles. That's because Unity has to render um, all these objects again with the um, light, with the light map, with the shadow map. So this is um, Unity basically generates um, um, extra costs with the <coughs> with the light mapping, <coughs> um, and with Erebus um, when you turn this office basically you we still have the shadows but they now generated with the STFs and also the ambient occlusion um, and we have a much better performance as you can see here this is the frame rate then when I go back here it's uh, quite an impact here and um, of course another thing um, is that um, we also I think also the quality is better or you the the whole picture looks better with Erebus. Um, for example, when we turn it off, just turn on the shadows here. Um, <coughs> you can see that yeah, it doesn't look that good and. Um, still when we increase the intensity here we we get our shadows but yeah it's not that nice um 
for this terrain demo you can also test it in, um, in with um, HDRP or URP um, for that you have to um, change the materials to switch them to HDRP so here we have the HDRP um, this is for the deferred rendering and you can we can also use the forward rendering um, it will also override the um, the materials um, especially um, yeah I can show you the materials for forward rendering so um, when we now open the HDRP scene and we uh, what we forgot we have of course we have to switch to HDRP here and we also have to check here that this is the Titan um, selected uh, settings because what's different to normal is that it selects this um, player resources they are here and the player resources have special shaders um, they are it, it's not so important for you because this is um, basically set automatically when you select the right um, player source or th the right um, HDRP resource but um, just as an information um, we're currently um, using here and I can find that um, sorry there it is yeah the deferred Erebus um, compute shader that's this one and the volumetric lighting here the, these two get replaced and um, yeah then we hit play and see if it's already working no it's not really so we um, for HDRP it's always a bit difficult so first we um, have to check if everything is up to date so we just updating the shaders here and yeah that should be fine also what's important is that in the render pipelines in Erebus there should be an HDRP folder if not then you have to extract HDRP zip data let's see now how it looks when we hit play yeah that looks better yeah. so basically now um, we have our HDRP rendering here and yeah I think it looks really nice we can also have a look here again um, how it looks without Erebus and just with the, the shadows on like this yeah not bad but I think um, this looks better and yeah you can um, always um, check the the different passes here with this um, Erebus renderer the render mode for example ambient occlusion here and see if everyth everything looks correct shadows this is now the direct light shadow if you have more different lights like point line spotlight they will al also be there and here you can also check um, some other things that are might be interesting here for example point lights um, there, there are some um, spotlights but then uh, here's for example here's one point light this number nine here when we move this around as you can see of course this also this debug view shows the, the changes um, yeah so I think that's it for for this debug view what's important here are these um, passes should always work um, for HDRP there is or there might be some um, just the motion vector here when I move the camera there might be still some issues with the motion vector and some unity versions we're still working on that um, but these 
two should work. Yes, um, so these are um, different um, um, debug views and um, yeah, for HDRP um, you might also want to change this, turn this off. Um, this is just an extra um, ambient occlusion overlay post effect but it's also altering a bit the lighting so normally I like to turn this one off here. Um, yes. Mm. And for yeah, for for more inf information, you can just um, have a look at the documentations. Um, I will show you now how to start up, um, how to set up a scene. So I have now here this new um, project, just imported here Erebus um, folder, and um, this is sh how you how it should also look um, in your system or project and uh, you can also um, use the, the package Erebus then when you have it as a package um, you um, can have click at the simple demo scene here and um, extract it but I, I would recommend using the unity package that is also on the github um, on the github page so, for example, here, um, this is still the old setup here. I will later upload uh, um, the new version. Here, um, under releases, there you get the, um, the files and um, I will also include the terrain demo here um, where you can load, um, download it as a Unity package if the, the size is not too big. I, I, I'm not sure if, if GitHub has a size limit but there might be a size limit. And Then I uh, will just um, post the link um, here on, on this page and then you can, can download the, the terrain demo too. Um, it's still um, work in progress but I think it's a nice demo and um, you can use the assets so I think uh, you can al already start playing with that and um, maybe it's, it's helpful for you. Um, but I think also the simple demo scene is um, already a good starting point. So here now when we click on the simple demo um, it's already working, everything is already set up. You can also go on this, um, the editor view and move the light around. Um, this also works here um, in, in editor mode. You don't have to go into play mode, and then um, you can adjust your your scene. And yeah, you can see that um, that the shadows um, here they they look a bit bit more pixeled because they um, are um, downsampled. But then in the in the final rendering here um, the quality is better and yeah as you can see the you can also change the light angle of the light and um, to make it more smooth as you can see or more sharp and I think yeah you really can get nice um, shadows nice soft shadows that are sharp at the um, at the beginning and then getting softer in the distance and all these objects here um, can be moved around and the, um, the lighting is not it's not baked and um, you can also use the um, use the contact shadows so they are normally also active. Um, you can have a look also at the debug view. Um, for now I think um, more interesting is that um, that this is uh, um, 
this is the built-in scene and if you want to switch to another HDRP system with the what, what I think most of you want to switch to URP or HDRP um, you have to do some changes of course uh, first you have to install the package here in your um, system so we can start with URP and um, then we also need to do some extra steps but it's actually it's not that complicated okay so now um, we need to change as normally we need to change this here there's already a preset and um, pipeline asset with Titan at the end and you can find them when you click on them and also edit them and there's also might be a UP folder. If, if there's no UAP folder or only a, an, an empty folder then you have to extract RP zip data here Titan tools extract and you click yes and then it will for the current render pipeline it will extract these um, files here um, we do this because um, they might uh, there there are um, some shaders in it, and they and also scripts and they would cause um, errors when you build the system. So yeah, just to to, to go on, don't get errors with if you don't use URP, we have to we put them in the zip and it automatically gets extracted here with this command and then you have to also update the defines and you should also update the shaders that doesn't hurt and then it shows here the shaders that are updated and um, if there are errors it will also show if it has some issues with the shaders if you get issues with the updated shaders um, let me know then we can fix that um, the moment we um, um, or I have tested already the 2021 versions and the 2022 and 2020 um, at 23 versions yeah um, but 2020 is not supported uh, um, anymore but th the other three new unity versions okay so URP um, Let's open the, the demo scene here and um, yeah, let's hit play and see if it's already working. So yeah, this seems to work and here in the editor view it also works. If you have issues or errors with the editor, um, what you can do is go to pr preferences in the Titan setting and turn off the editor mode. Um, then um, and there's also the welcome screen you can turn it on and off if you want to um, see it again um, but now um, with this mode here it's, the, it's coming up if you want to check the online menu for example or s see the setup for the URP things like that um, but um, now um, when I turn this off here, the it's not working in the editor anymore. Um, the sometimes there might be some issues still with GUI stuff, and um, so yeah, at the moment this is still um, um, alpha or be better feature, but it's um, it sometimes it, it's helpful. And but normally um, it should work like this, and then you can of course um, modify your lighting here in, in the editor already. You can just duplicate here the, the lights again. Copy this one. You can see. Um, 
Yeah. And with HDRP, uh, uh, sorry, with U URP, um, you um, should know that there are these, um, as I can see here, some don't need to. Okay. We only need the motion vector. Um, th th that That's good when you check this one. You only need the uh, motion. Um, vector stuff, motion render feature and the titan render pass. If there are two or more then um, yeah, just remove them so you only have these two. And yeah, you can also here switch to forward rendering but um, with forward rendering you need to adjust the materials. So um, this is now working. We switch to forward. Um, you can see don't get the shadows here anymore um, but when you here go to um, um, universal render pipeline under the lid is the lid error bus and then again you got the, the shadows again so it's basically um, all the materials have this error bus at the end uh, the shaders, sorry, the shaders have this Erebus at the end for the forward rendering. Normally with the deferred rendering you don't need um, extra mat um, material shaders, but for forward rendering you need these. So yeah, um, this is URP now. Um, let's go to um, HGRP. Um, it's basically the same. But um, yeah, minor changes here. We'll just show you in a second. Um, we also have to change the um, the render pipeline, of course, and select the right um, um <coughs> the right resources, the right assets, and. Um, yeah, HDRP is still the one that has the most of the bugs. So, um, yeah, it's still a work in progress, but I think we're getting there. The moment HDRP, the m oh, we have two main issues. One is um, the so now we're still missing. One is the the the. Um, um, Anti-aliasing, temporal anti-aliasing is not um, working correctly. So this is, I think, one of the main issues with HDRP. So the moment you have to use a different um, anti-aliasing or yeah, turn it off for now. And yeah, the motion vector is a bit an issue uh, with some Unity versions, not with all, but some Unity versions have some issues with the setup we we have here. Okay, so we have now the HDRP folder extracted. Um, we should also open the HDRP scene. <coughs> we still have to check again. This is the right one with the Titan. Here is not um, this is not the correct one. We need this one because, as I said before, we need here this um, player resources which is can be found here and there are the correct shadow, uh, shaders. Okay, so um, we can also just update defines, update HDRP shaders and let's hit play and see if it's already working. Um, Sometimes you have to restart the editor if you get errors and stuff like that. It's, it's the best practice to just restart Unity. Mm, I think in this case I also have to restart. Um, because there are some errors with HDRP, with the installation. Let's just try to restart it. Let's 
So, still some issues here. Um, may just press re-import here with the shaders. You can also um, re-import the Titan shaders. We'll show you in a second. <laughs> but normally this is not the... Uh, normally it works without uh, re-importing Let's just try this one again. And normally you on only have to do this once and then when you stick to the render pipeline of your choice then you don't have to kerfuffle with all the different um, shaders importing stuff. Yeah, the, the re-import shader is always takes a bit longer but um, it's, it helps sometimes. And also what helps is um, just to, to hit play and see if it's running. <laughs> Actually this... Um, yeah, I think we got it now. Yeah, so basically what helped now was to re-import the shader. Seems like that one of these um, shaders here, HDRP um, resources shaders, maybe the compute shader here, they, w one of these, they might be not, so you can also try to go here and press re-import, might be a bit quicker. Also check the background task because sometimes they are important to that they are finished in this case it's not so important because there are some variants that we don't need but normally this should also be finished to have the correct um, result. So HGP works here also in the editor bring these things around um, <coughs> uh, one thing I said before I think when with HDP it looks better when you turn off the or you can just switch here, turn it off like this, or you turn this to zero. It's the same effect. Uh, I think the quality looks better with the lighting. It's my personal. Um, this is the, the other one is just a, a top um, ambient occlusion effect, but um, yeah can also here edit the ambient occlusion, set it to 1, I think it still looks very nice and yeah. I also can play here with the fall off fact and things like that. Mm. This also might be important, normally I use metric, I think Mike um, he likes to use imperial, but metric is basically it's the, I think also the standard for unity to have characters that are like um, two un units high, so example here, this this should be t like two two units, two meters. This should be the height of a of a character, and yeah, that's um, how it works. Um, yeah, so. You, we can also combine um, the, of course, here the, sh the shadows. Um, but then I would recommend to, you, for example, to keep the performance high, that you um, you don't use the cascades. You use only um, you use only one um, cascade. I can the bit and then um, you use it only for your if you have, if you have a character um, that's close to the camera um, then you can use the use that um, yeah I think uh, the distance is a bit high. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think like 15 or so. Yeah, 
and then you also get shadows for your character and as you can see the um, these shadows also work with um, the other shadows together all right um yeah I think that's HDRP um I had the the issues with HDRP as I said before um <coughs> anti aliasing if you use temporal anti aliasing you get this flickering here so at the moment not usable and we also have these custom passes depending on your setting you have two one for it's like in between the others the post effect you can turn off the post effect um, here with this one then we only have the, the normal um, um, shadow and ambient occlusion here running in this injection point and then here's the motion vector support is turned off at the moment um, and yeah the reason why is because there are some unity versions I'm not sure which I still have to figure that out but some have issues with the setup or how it is set up here I think it's um, we can fix that too but at the moment it's a bit tricky so um, yeah, let's have a look at the debug view if you need to let me do the debug view here yeah, that's normal looks fine motion vector this works turn this off okay still working <coughs> but I think um, this motion vector support was for op Checks. Um, so, um, by the way, the debug view is also in the scene editor. <laughs> so, if you ever want to have a debug view here in the scene, like depth, it's very helpful. Like normals you can go in here and have fun with that. Um, yeah. Um, we can what we can try see if just checking the have this auto rotation script Let's see if we see the motion vector here with that mm. yeah motion vector is still this is still work in progress but yeah as you can see there is some vectors happening here let's see if it's still there when we turn this off yeah so looks like we don't need that <laughs> um, Yeah, maybe Mike already fixed that. I don't know, but um, yeah, just um, to keep the performance, just leave it off. I will check this again if it's really needed or not. Um, but for now, yeah, just leave it like this. Okay. Um, so I think the main issue with HJP still remains with the temporal and the lasing, but yeah. Uh, I will let you know about the motion vector if it's really an issue now but um, it might be with other unity versions so can't tell right now <laughs> okay um, we have some still some issues with the um, with the instance manager um, basically one thing is that it's um, you um, often you have to add this instance field renderer manually um, that's not being automatic at the moment um, I can show you maybe in this other test project here this is also just a test project um,
and there, yeah, there are still some some issues with. Um, let's have a look. With the transformation, maybe I should close the other ones. Okay. So uh, this looks fine. Um, here we we had uh, as you can show in this this is twenty twenty one three. I turn on the the motion vector. Ah, and this one I already turned it off here, yeah. but. Um, when I um, when I import when I would import the latest version here in this project, maybe I should do that quickly. Um, give me a second. Um, just copying the, uh, the latest version, and then um, you can see that there there is a problem with the motion vector, but actually it looks like we don't <laughs> need it. Um, yeah, I think we we can do this later. Uh, what I want to show you here is um, when we are moving around these objects, this seems to work. And when we are now rotating them, That's also fine, but some objects have problems. Let's see if this one works here. It's a bit uh, bright. Let's turn this. Okay. So there's a building here, big one. Um, this is the generated SDF of the building. Um, I think we need to remove this. It al already says that it has problems with the transformation. Um, and it doesn't look that bad. I just um, turn this back. But there are there are already some issues with still the shadows. But we can what we can do is um, here this shadow this seems wrong, and also this one. So there there are some issues with the shadows as you can see. But this um, comes from the um, adjustment of the SDF. So there. Um, As you can see here, the SDF view, it's not really looking right. There's some some problems with the SDF still to have the right transformation. So it's basically it's a transformation issue we have. And so, but this of course will affect the shadows and all the other ambient occlusion, all the other parts. So uh, we still need to fix it. It's, it's not always an issue. But um, as you can see, these objects are working fine. But with this bu building, however, here I'm not sure why. But yeah, this heaven. Sometimes it also it, it helps when you um, when you adjust this bias value here, or you regenerate the atlas. But this might take a bit longer. Um, uh, this already looks better, I think. Uh, um, but still a bit weird. Um, yeah, there's there's still something wrong. Um, 
but I think the STF is this looks fine. Yeah. What you can also do is if you want, um, oh, I didn't mention yet, I'm doing batch conversion. You can use this editor, then generate the STFs with all the selected um, prefabs. Um, normally you should have them somewhere here visible for the editor to see. Um, you can also um, just select, for example, let's select the, the building here, um, the prefab, and then you can go create, tighten, convert, select to STF, but then you should at first adjust the settings in the batch converter. For example, if I want a higher resolution here, I put this in and also performance I set to 1, but if you have a um, an old PC you should um, set it lower the performance or leave it to 0.5. Okay, so um, here you can, um, now let's try this, right click convert, so let's see how it looks now. I think it's still converting. It's in the background, the conversion. Um, still not updated. Uh, now, now we have it. Okay, so that's the iris, iris version. More details. And. Um, we can we we have to um update the the atlas also for that um, and yeah what we could draw tries this one here and um the Distance renderer. Let's see if this works. Mm. Oh, maybe I have to. Let's start the uh, start it again. So still some issues here with this um, this rendering, uh, but the main issue is still the um, is still the instance manager. I think yeah we have to fix that. But um, as you can see, the 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 other projects um, are working fine. So it's basically it comes down to um, some objects we need to further investigate them and test them. Because here, as you can see, these these objects are all rendered correctly. Um, they are all in the, in the same position on the right position, ambient occlusion is working, shadows are working, yeah. So, that's it, yeah. I think, um, if you want some more, um, information um, let me know via discord and um, yeah I will upload now the, the github version <laughs>